Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be looking at the square root function, its equation, how to graph it, and some of the transformations which affect its shape and its equation. So firstly, what is the square root function? So the square root function is y is equal to the square root, hence its name, of x. Now, of course, it can have some transformations and look slightly different. However, it's always the square root of x, or can also be represented as x, to 1 over 2, as these are the same things, so they're interchangeable. So what does it look like? So we have the equation here. We have y is equal to 1 over uh, y is equal to the square root of x. So what happens when x is equal to negative 2? y is equal to negative 2, but that's not defined. What happens when x is equal to negative 10? Well, same thing, it's not defined. So you find that for all the negative values, it's not defined. And the important thing to note here is that anything inside a square root bracket must be positive, must be greater or equal to zero. Now, with the square root function, at the moment you can just say all the x values have to be positive, but with transformations it does change it. So I always think it's better to think about it as in whatever's in the square root bracket must be positive. At the moment it's only x, so therefore x must always be positive or equal to zero. Now what happens when x is equal to zero? Well then y is equal to zero. So now we know that there is, we don't have to worry about this side for now, because at in the middle, it can't be less than 0. It's not defined. And then we know that there is a point here, which is 0, 0. What happens when x is equal to, let's say, 4? y is equal to 2. When x is equal to 9, y is equal to 3. When x is equal to 16, y is equal to 4. So you can see that at first, 4 and 2, it's like it's about here and here, so it's not too bad. But then by the time you get to x equals to 16, y has only gone up 2. So the graph is going to look something like this here. So it's always going to be increasing, but the gradient is going to decrease, as you can see uh, along here. And then it starts at 0, 0. So that's quite important. And this point here is called the end point. So I mentioned then we're talking about domain and range. And when you do graph the square root function, no matter where the function starts or wherever the endpoint is, you didn't do need to draw it. And as it is inclusive, i.e. the x value can equal zero, then it needs to be a closed dot. Obviously that's emphasized, but you don't want to draw an open dot across as that is incorrect. So the general shape is this. Now, this may look similar to y is equal to x squared. However, sort of the other way. And that is because they're actually inverses of each other. And we'll talk about that more later. However, see how the shape actually is very similar, and that's because it is. And then it's actually reflected in the line y is equal to x. And when, when we talk about inverses, we'll talk about this, but that's when you swap the y and the x. And you can see that when you swap the y and the x, it'll be a good exercise to see that this equation then becomes this. And when you're only talking about one side of it, because it should be plus or minus square root x, but we're just talking about so like the positive end at the moment. So looking at some dilations, we have the general shape here, where this point is 0, 0, we have y is equal to square root of x. Then you can see that when dilations are pretty easy to see, y is equal to 3 square root x, y is equal to 2 square root x, oh, not 2, uh, half square root x. You can see how they affect, as y will just be greater at each x point. So that means that's from the x-axis or parallel to the y. So we can see that replacing y for this example with y on 3, because 3 is times over. And for this example, replacing y with y on a half, which is just equal to 2y. And that means we have to divide 2, and that's why we get a half. So what about reflections? So two types of reflections. So firstly, we have y equals the square root of x. So what happens when we reflect in x? When we reflect in x, we replace y 
with negative y. So we get negative y is equal to the square root of x. So y is equal to negative square root x. So the graph is all the same, apart from we now have all the y values being negative. So the endpoint's the same, so 0, 0, but we're going down along here. So that was fairly straightforward. What happens if we say we're going to reflect in y axis? Then we replace x with negative x. So now we get the equation y is equal to the square root of negative x. How is this changing it though? So originally we had this graph here, but now we have negative x. So let x equal 2. Now y is equal to negative 2. Now it's not defined. So obviously the graph has changed. So looking at graphically, it's reflected in the y, so it's going to look like this. And the reason for this is that all the x values have been changed and reflected in the y-axis. Now, the only ones that are defined by the square root function are negative x values, because two negatives make a positive. And that's why I said you don't want to, with square root, just say, oh, it always x always has to be positive, as it does depend on what's inside the brackets. So that's why I always like to think, what's inside it? Negative x now must always be positive. Therefore, you can take a negative to the other side, and that flips it. So x must be always less than or equal to 0. So we've just flipped the graph here, and then y is equal to negative x is represented by this graph. So here's an example where we can go through some how translations affect it as well, as well as a reflection. So we have y equals negative square root x, x minus 3 plus 4. So we can rearrange that and we get x minus 4 is equal to negative x minus 3. Take the negative across and we get negative y minus 4 is equal to the square root of x minus 3. Then we can see here that there is y has been replaced by negative y minus 4 and x has been replaced by x minus 3. So in regards to translations, x has been moved to 3 units in positive x and then in regards to the y it's been moved four units in positive y and then it has been reflected here so here is a reflection and because it, it's going to be a reflection in the x-axis and that's because you're changing y and remember it has to be the opposite so here we have a reflection in x-axis. So graphing this, we originally had 0, 0, but now we've moved it up 4 units, and we've moved it across 3 units. And you can find the endpoint quickly, a quick way to find it is actually to let whatever the inside is equal to 0, and that's because that will be the endpoint when square the square root of 0 is equal to 0, and that occurs when x minus 3 is equal to 0, therefore x is equal to 3. Sub that in, and we find that y is equal to 4, so we know that the end point is going to be 3, 4. So it's going to be this point here, which is 3, 4. Now we're not sure what the graph looks like. It could look like this, it could look like this, this, or this. Now originally it looked like this, now, there has been a reflection in the x-axis, so if you're reflecting it down, it will look like that. There has a marine reflection in the y, so we assume that it will look like this. So how do we check that? Well, there's not going to be a y-intercept. So that means when x equals 0, it's not going to exist. So if x is equal to 0, we get the square root of negative 3. So that works, because we just said there shouldn't be one, so there's not. Now, if should do this sort of part on Scrappy, and then we can redraw it nicely, so we know that it's at the point uh, 3, 4, and the graph will look like this.